So the fresh start effect, something I did some research on back in the day, but has been recently done a lot by Katie Milkman, is the idea that at a certain categorical change in time, like a new year or the start of the month, people feel as if they can change. Uh, Google searches for gyms peak or, or spike at the start of a month. So the question is, does the fresh start actually lead to change? And that's actually a, a bad question. The answer is yes, if it is supported by other things. Because the fresh start has shown to work sometimes and then other times not been replicated. But whenever it's not replicated, I look at those failures to replicate and say, well, it wasn't surrounded by other powerful psychological concepts at that time. For instance, there wasn't a lot of a norm that other people were doing it. Or it was done in a space where there really wasn't a social narrative about that categorical change, such as it was done at the start of a month or a week rather than the start of New Year's, or people don't think of changing that behavior as associated with a fresh start. There's no societal narrative. Or there aren't so many other things, like it wasn't there was an ease of changing, there wasn't sexy marketing, and there wasn't a lot of personal motivation in the people that they were studying this on. And so whenever anything works, it works because of so many things happening, situational, individual, societal level, interacting forces to create the intersectionality of all these things that is going to lead to that result. So whenever you're trying to construct something, you're never just using one idea from our field. You have to be thinking about all the other things that need to be there in order for the idea to work. Even behavioral scientists aren't immune to behavioral biases. Yeah, I think uh, no matter how much you know about behavioral science, when you try and apply it in the real world, things still get complicated and you still sort of fall victim to the same types of biases that you're trying to prevent out in the world. Uh, sort of the, the fundamental insight of, of behavioral science is that knowledge doesn't lead to behavior, but classical economics and the sort of assumptions of rationality are so built in to the way that we function that when we try and bring behavioral science out of the lab and apply it in the real world, we sort of fall victim to the same problems. We think that if we just go and talk about behavioral science for two hours at a conference, that all these people will have a rational, aha, people are irrational moment, and then go back to their, uh, you know, their organizations and say, oh, people are irrational, let's redesign our whole product. And, and in reality, it takes a lot of behavioral science to get people to go out and apply behavioral science. Right. So, and what's really interesting is that it's also not just the customers who experience friction, right. but uh, what I find that is that when you know we're trying to apply behavioral science, we're very cognizant about um, using get to get an organization to apply right. behavioral right. science. Right. 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 Sounds really meta, but uh, it really trickles all the way down. So mm -hmm. we're very cognizant of. Um, figuring out a way to introduce it into how we manage our projects, how do we get clients on board uh, with something, and also even for our team, mm -hmm. like how do we use behavioral science to um, make sure people are living more fulfilled lives or happier and healthier and uh, more financially well off. Yeah. What most people don't know about behavioral science is that it is not real. There is no such thing as a discipline called behavioral science. When we use the term behavioral science, we're actually dealing with a rather large surface area. And that surface area is made up of multiple disciplines. You've got behavioral economics, behavior design, and kind of persuasive technology, cognitive psychology, social psychology, personality psychology, experimental economics, marketing science, and, and these are all different disciplines. They have different frameworks, they have different theories, they have different concepts, and they have different methodologies. And so a social psychologist might be interested in things like group dynamics and social influence. A, a cognitive psychologist might be interested in things like memory and perception and attention. Uh, an experimental economist might be interested in things like preferences and scarcity and uh, incentive design and, and so on and so forth. And so really what we have to do as practitioners is go into that complex literature a, a, of the behavioral sciences across multiple disparate disciplines that are no way unified in some grand theory uh, of behavior change and pull out those concepts, pull out those techniques, pull out those frameworks and figure out what actually works in the real world.